Hey YouTubers, it's me, Lonnie Clark. I guess I put up videos intermittently because I just looked at my history to see how long it's been. And um, I guess it hasn't been that long. I just posted up in March, so I guess that wasn't too far away. But I did want to make a video because I recently, as you, if it, many of you saw, I uh, posted a video about March for Our Lives Salem, which I volunteered with. Uh, just last week actually and that's why I want to make this video because after the mass shootings in Uvalde it occurred to me while we watch these cops just let these kids bleed out the teachers and the kids bleed out it occurred to me that we're living in a civilization that literally has been killing its children since the 50s intentionally since they started bombing the daylights out of the planet with nuclear contamination all over the planet I guess that's maybe the 40s the end of the 40s and the early 50s through the 60s and through the 70s and through the 80s and only stopped like 90s I don't know why we're shocked that we actually have a SWAT team that shows up, that takes up the 40% of the town's budget and then just watches the kids bleed out. It's exactly the same thing that the nuclear industry is doing for us. You know, the reason that I got involved with the Post Ignorance Project is I was stunned when I found out how toxic nuclear was and how prevalent it really was once I started digging in I was like oh my god how can we let this happen you know and then I guess I went into the ring and got beat up for six years and basically got counted out because I just I I couldn't take the online harassment that's literally why I stopped I just the doxing just the whole the whole thing was just not worth it because we're going up against people who La 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 they don't care. They honestly do not care if our children live or die as long as they make money. In fact, there's an organization outside of Diablo Canyon, Moms for Nuclear, and they're all women nuclear power plant workers who are mothers who are like, yeah, let's go with the whole nuclear thing. You know? So we wonder how we got Trader Trump in this country well that's how with that kind of mentality people ignoring the big issues and the important facts for this specific little thing which in Trump's case was he allowed racism to be good again and we're suffering from that now with the mass deaths because let me tell you what these mass deaths are real a hundred percent related to white male supremacy if not just male supremacy but white male supremacy and it is stunning that our culture kind of goes around in circles about all this thing like these kids are dying nuclear is contaminating is so is chemicals so i mean i had an argument one time as i shared with many of you a long time might remember this i had a long conversation with a health physicist note an industry created by the nuclear industry that the chemicals inside a nuclear power plant are far more immediately toxic than nuclear contamination, which upon further review, when I looked it up, ding, 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 he's right. That shit will kill you faster than nuclear, but guess what? Nuclear wipes out your ability to procreate in the future, four, five, six generations away. So what's more toxic? I guess... The bottom line is, is they are all counting on Guy McPherson being right, that there's not going to be life on this planet by 2050, or human life. I, for one, will have grandchildren alive by then, and I, I am clinging to the idea of divine intervention, <laughs> to be honest, or alien intervention, which a lot of people think is divine intervention, but who knows what it really is. I mean... Honestly, you know what, you guys, you don't laugh, but I'm going to share this part of myself with you. Over the last year and a half, two years, since the uh, calamity of having open treason in our faces every single day, grifting and grafting right in front of our eyes, and the Department of Justice protecting white supremacy at all costs, even above upholding our Constitution, 
I have started listening to Psychic Tarot, Tarot, Political Tarot on YouTube. I listen to Linda G, Lena Rodriguez. I think Lena's channel's name is uh, Tarot Down Under, Lena Rodriguez. <laughs> I love these women. There's a guy named Hogarth out in Texas. I mean, he's in, he's not in Texas. He's out in, um, so far away from that. He's in London. <laughs> he's a Brit, but he does Vedic astrology and he does Vedic political astrology. Somehow having people read cards and read astrology and tell us what the planets are telling me about all these insane people running our civilization to the ground and how they're going to get their comeuppance gives me comfort, <laughs> right? So that's how I've been making do emotionally after I plugged out of all of it in 2018. I just could not take the doxing, not just from the online pro-nukers, but actually from the so-called standard people like Libby Hulevi, who every single week I edit her show, Nuclear Hot Seat for KEPW, who still does not post her videos up on YouTube I have no, I, I mean, she did tell me about two years ago, she doesn't want to be a YouTuber because it's not respected in the community. But you know what? Beyond Nuclear has started posting. So has, uh, what is it? Nukes for Space, I think it's called. You know, so Carl Grossman posts up. Eco, Euro, Eco, I forget what Carl Grossman's is, but it's something like that. Enviro. Enviro video, I think that's what he calls it. I mean, honestly, I guess I have to practice the number two agreement. Don't take it personally. <laughs> that's a hard one for me. I keep having to practice that one. It's so hard because I want people to reach out on the YouTube videos because there's millions and millions of people on YouTube. It's such an accessible thing. Although my channel has been up on YouTube for what? 10 years almost now and what I have like maybe 400 subscribers although I do have to admit I have never marketed it I've never attempted to monetize I don't do anything to make my thing right but it's a really great way to get the message out which is why I put out that YouTube video the other day about the March for our lives Salem so that we can actually get people to show up that's also why I wanted to talk to you about this and how I got involved with that because I made this correlation last week. I was thinking about like after that shooting, like how in our culture, like we're basically have been having the cops watch our kids bleed out since the 40s. That's essentially how I was thinking about it. And then I guess it was last Tuesday or Wednesday I heard about a shooting you know, since Uvalde, we've had like, what, 17, 18 mass shootings since then. There's an epidemic of gun shootings because vigilante justice is apparently alive and well in the United States of America. Nobody abides by the law because they think they have a right to kill and shoot anybody they want. If they feel offended, they pull their gun out and plug you with a, you know, use an AR-15 and, you know, I don't know if you guys know about AR-15s, but they don't just go one bullet right in your heart they're like they shred they're shredding machines they basically turn whatever you're aiming at into shredded meat so it's not really a weapon a hunting weapon it's not a weapon it's a shred machine so i was thinking about that there's also 20 million ar-15s in this country so i had that on my brain a lot in the last couple of days that last week and then i saw that story about the little boy and the Googles popped up this article for me to read about the little boy who got shot in the back of the neck, died. They were on their way home to New York from South Carolina, and the dad got shot in the leg. I looked all over the internet to figure out where I could see what kind of weapon was used. None of the articles had the weapon disclosed. So I decided to call the Franklin Sheriff's Department in South Carolina where it happened. The lady on the phone, literally, when I asked her, I said, can you tell me, because I haven't seen 
any in any of the articles what kind of weapon was used like i want to know they're like okay well what organization are you from and i'm like i'm not from any organization i'm just a mother and a grandmother and i want to know what killed this this family what destroyed this family she's like oh well we're not disclosing that right now and i'm like can you tell me why she's like ma'am you're gonna have to talk to somebody else so i'm like okay <laughs> So she summarily put me on hold, and a really sweet lady picked up the phone. Hello, blah, 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 Sheriff's Department. I'm like, yeah, I'd like blah, 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 blah. Oh, well, you have to talk to Sergeant Nunn, and he just stepped out. Can you just hold on? And I'm like, sure, I can. So that went on for about 35 minutes. She kept picking up the phone every three to five minutes, hoping I would hang up, I'm sure. After 35 minutes, Sergeant Nunn answered the phone. Nunn. Love the name. I don't know if it's karmic, but quite interesting. He basically um, was very sweet to me. We're not trying to withhold anything. We're not trying to deceive anyone. We're just doing our job. It's really hard. He had a ton of weapons. We don't know which weapon he used, so we can't really tell you. And I'm like, okay. So I have a, he's on my calendar. I'm going to call him tomorrow morning. I'm going to give him a week to figure out what kind of weapon it was, which we know it was an AR-45, uh, AR-15, because poosh, it exploded enough to go through the back of a window in the back of a car seat and kill a kid and injure his dad. So something's wrong, right? After I got off of that phone call, I was so upset at at them withholding this information like I essentially felt like this guy had played me for a fool as if he didn't know as if I didn't know he didn't know like for real it had already been a day and a half since the shooting and he did not know what kind of weapon it was because the guy had so many weapons in his house they couldn't figure out which weapon he used to shoot and kill that little kid I'm like, okay, so I took it. It's kind of like what you have to do when you talk to the senators and the congressmen, when you go talk to them about the anti-nuclear shit. They dish out a line of shit on you and act like you're supposed to believe their lies. Like, of course you wouldn't know the difference. Don't worry your pretty little head about it. I got off the phone so pissed off, I decided I am going to stop ranting on Twitter and start getting engaged. So I went to March for Our Lives on Twitter, looked for an organization in Salem, Oregon, where I now live, and I found March for Our Lives Salem. And they were on Instagram, only on Instagram. You can only get in touch with them on Instagram. So I sent them a message, hey, would you guys like some volunteers? And she's like, yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> Literally, it is one person who has been doing this March for Our Lives Salem since Parkland, since the Parkland shoot, shooting, since this young woman was in eighth grade. She's now a junior in high school. And she is the only person involved. I, I literally, this is the very interesting thing for me as a boomer. I contacted her through Instagram. You know, we're messaging back and forth. I gave her my phone number. Literally, I have not spoken with this girl. She lives in my town. I offered to go meet with her, introduce myself to her parents. The one thing we did while we were talking back and forth and, you know, yes, please do help us. I was like, well, the events next week, have you guys put out a press release or anything? She's like, oh, I haven't had time. I'm like finals and everything. I'm like, you poor sweet child. I got off, when I stopped texting her and got off the computer because we'd never spoke, I literally started crying like we are leaving children up to defend them fucking selves guilty as charged I've never gotten involved with them I've never been involved with them and I just like I, I just assumed their parents teenage parents going taking their kids to school would be involved in the March for Our Lives thing or that the moms for March for Moms or whatever it is these anti-gun organizations, I figured that they would help the teenagers. No, the teenagers have just been like shoved out on their own to go do it. It's the most insane thing I've ever seen. 
what do I expect out of an insane society, though? It's insanity what we do in the United States to our youth. I mean, it is... When I think about my own youth, when I was like 16, 17 years old, our first, my first political action was going to the very first Earth Day. And it was a huge protest in our school. It was like 10 o'clock in the morning and even the teachers locked the doors. We all left our classrooms, marched down to the grocery store about a quarter of a mile away in mass, the whole entire school, all the administrators, all the teachers, they locked up the school. Everybody went down there to protest nuclear power and to protest pollution and to demand legislation to protect our environment. It wasn't a big party on Earth Day to celebrate the Earth, which is, has been co-opted by the very corporations that we were fighting against. So I just, I, I just felt so compelled to share this story with you guys because the few of you who have been following me for a long time know me pretty well and know that like I, I, I'm just I'm flabbergasted I literally am flabbergasted over this whole idea that owning an AR-15 to shred varmints from your farm or to buy to make you feel like you're a man and you can stand up to anybody or I'm a woman and I can protect myself. What the fuck? You know, we're at the United States of America where we have a constitution and the rule of law. And that's what we abide by. If somebody challenges you, you call the cops. Although my number one rule in life is avoid cops and doctors. They will kill you with impunity and without remorse. However, there have been times I've had to call cops and they have helped, right? So it's just so insane what we're doing to our children. Not just with guns, with poisons and toxins. Like this whole thing we have to imagine, like think about this, like one of my big things about Instagram and TikTok that really grates on my nerves, no offense to anybody who may have done this, is people who post up pictures of their children with like the weirdest diseases in the whole freaking world. Like my son has this rare disease and isn't it great? He's all hooked up to tubes or hanging on to some kind of a thing or there's always something like, they're sweet little babies, but they're managing life under the most difficult circumstances. And yet, not one of those people have ever mentioned, hmm, I wonder how my child got this super rare disease. Nobody connects it to nuclear or chemical contamination. And I do know why, because I interviewed Erica Dugan on the Age of Fission several times. She even called me about a year and a half ago. She was going to court over something, still fighting. You know what Erica Dugan is now down to? She's fighting to keep her children on health insurance because she sued the state, she sued the city, she sued the governor in Oklahoma because they knew they were putting fracked water in her pipes, which have caused her children long-term, and her husband, long-term permanent debilitating diseases and herself. And they're fighting for compensation on that. That's when I interviewed her like four or five years ago. When I talked to her about a year and a half ago and she's like, hey, do you still have those audios that we did on our interview? And I'm like, yeah, I think so. I think I did find them. I never heard back from her, but I sent her what I had. She's fighting to keep health insurance because now in the state of Oklahoma, no health carrier will help her family because she sued the state. This is what we're up against. It's like that lady who went in and saved her kids in Uvalde is now being threatened by the cops for harassment. Because she's talking to CNN and the news media about going in there and saving her children. So anyways, this is really what I want to say to people. 
The March for Our Lives protests are happening on June 11th all across the nation. You can go for March, you can go to marchforourlives.com, put in your zip code number and find a march near you. These teenagers and the youth need adult allies to show up in force. When I asked this young woman, her name is Paisley in Salem, who's been running this, I said, gee, Paisley, don't you need a permit to do all this? She's like, no, not if we don't have too many people. <laughs> when she wrote that back to me, I started laughing. <laughs> the goal of a protest, not to have too many people. <laughs> So sweet. I swear to God, I love teenagers. They're just like so simple. Like, that's great. <laughs> Enough people want. She's like, well, in the past, not very many people showed up. So, and then I said to her, like, well, what about a photographer? Or what are you going to do for, you know, getting it out? I, she's like, well, that would be really great. So I am actually looking around for people who want to come and take photographs. I'll take photographs if I have to, to post them up. Uh, I'm going to rent a bullhorn or do something like that so she'll, she'll be able to speak. I'm not going to be speaking. It's going to be her. It's the youth talking, right? But I think she anticipates like 15, 20 people. I hope to God that's not what we have. It, it, there are hundreds. If you go to marchforourlives.com, there are hundreds of sites that are going to be having protests all across the nation on June 11th. That's this coming Saturday. So this is a sweet addendum to this. Do you know why ours is June 12th? Because her parents had a previous <laughs> engagement and couldn't be around on the 11th, so she had to reschedule it for the 12th. Because she's a teenager. She's 17 years old. She's a junior in high school. 16, 17 years old. I think she might be 16. I haven't even really asked her her age. I'm just like flabbergasted about this, that this is what we're doing to our, our youth. Go out and defend yourselves. Beg our Congress, beg the legislator to pass laws so you don't have to be afraid at school that you're going to get mowed down by some lunatic with an AR-45 who could buy it anytime he wants. It's fucking insane. So I am imploring anybody who hears this message that made it this far I am 22 minutes in. I always talk too long. <laughs> uh, find a march for your lives. March for our lives. Protest. Show up. Support the youth. Please. I'm begging you. I'm imploring you. Find one near you and show up. A warm body does a lot more to a protest than just reading about it in a newspaper. So, and to anybody in Salem, Oregon, or the surrounding area, if you see this video on June 12th and you join us, please walk up to me and introduce yourself. I'd love to meet anybody out there. And I think I'm going to start posting videos again up on YouTube just to rant and rave about my feelings because, I don't know. It feels good just to express myself, and ironically, not very many people listen, so it's sort of freeing. <laughs> I can say whatever I want. <laughs> so that's kind of the good thing. But, um, you know, and if you guys are interested in some very interesting takes on politics, I highly recommend Linda G. Comanche Psychic <laughs> on YouTube, or Lena Rodriguez, I think it's called Tarot Down Under, or... What's the other one that I follow that I totally love her? Marianne from Revealing Tarot. And they do political tarot. It's super interesting. And Hogarth. H-O-G-A-R-T-H. Hogarth. Vedic Astrology. I think it's up. They're all on YouTube. But the take is really interesting. And ironically, a lot of what they say has happened. Also, there's a like a medium named Cash Peters. He's actually an author. Cash Peters is an author and I've ordered his books. They're all fabulous. But he gets these visions and he sees stuff. And so it's kind of interesting. His stuff is fun. I mean, he he, he puts out videos all the time. So that's just a little bit of levity for us because you know what? It's a challenging place that we live in. 
And I encourage all of you to uh, join hands, walk in love. Remember, happiness is resistance and love is greater than fear. So put your courage feet on, like I always said. Ciao, you guys. Turn this thing off. Bye.